We are back. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Dear Diary. And today we are going to talk about. Actually, before I start the topic, I just wanted to ask, how are you all today? Are you doing fine? Are you currently kicking back, listening? Maybe you're having a coffee, wanting to have some peace and quiet before your day begins, or maybe you're even getting ready to go to school. Or work, and、um, you just want to listen to someone talk. Well, either way, I hope you're doing fine and lovely, and you had a great night's sleep or a great nap. Regardless, I just wanted to thank you all for joining me today, for taking the time out of your life and whatever that you're doing right now to really sit down and listen to me as I discuss about. What today's topic is. So today's topic is going to be about love, which is kind of fitting. It will be Valentine's Day, and Valentine's Day falls on the fourteenth of February. So I'm sure some of you are excited, and I'm sure some of you are really looking forward to it because it is a day that is supposed to project the idea of love. It's Basically, a lot of couples go out of their way to express their love for their partner. Who knows? You might get lucky. You might enjoy a great day. That's the time when you will take Instagram pictures and just show people that I am having the best time of my life. But I feel like because of that, it seems fitting to talk about this topic today, which. Also means that because I'm talking about this topic, I feel like I also need to get a bit personal with you guys. I have never really experienced、uh, love before. I know the idea of it. I enjoy the idea of it. I see the how to say this the potential of it, love. But I think as we grow older, we all start to realize that love is just a word. It is the very Um, meaning or the very word that we use when we want to describe an emotion towards someone that we can't really describe. So in this case, there is a lot of type of love. There is the basic familial love. There's the friend love, and then there's the love love, the love where you share with your significant other. This is where people get married and they choose to settle down together. But the reality is much more、um, deeper than that. I mean, as you grow older, you just realize that without even having to anyone explain it really. So, moving on, what do I think about love? Well, for me, love in general is just something that you、um, spend the better part of your life trying to find, and sometimes you end up not being able to find it at all. And that's it. It can get a bit sad, but today we're not gonna talk about the sadness aspect of it. We're gonna talk about, we're gonna look at it objectively because you know, um, there are so many different types of definitions of love, and I feel like everyone wants to listen to their heart. That sometimes they don't listen to their brain, and that's where shit happens essentially because you can't differentiate what is real and what is not. So, um. This is just my brutally honest opinion. What do I think about love? I think it is a fairy tale. I think if you can find this type of love, it is forever, and it is not something that you should, and、um, you should hurt. Essentially, if you do find it, or if you already have it, right? Just know that this is this thing is forever. You know, as much as we. You know, we live in a society now where hookup culture is a thing, where everyone doesn't want to be in love. They want to hook up without,、um, basically, no strings attached. We live in a society that it's so normalized now, and because of that, I feel like a lot of、um, younger people, especially people my age, we all struggle with self control and self doubt and basically、um, self insecurities. One way to see it is we look at love as a way to describe our emotions. We paint love as this thing where.、Um, You need this in order to be feel good about yourself, in order to、um, make a point, really. And usually, that love comes in the aspect of others. You know that that's where it comes from, and that others meaning to say your significant other. I'm not gonna get into the the familial love or the friend love or whatever. I just wanna、uh, make it really straightforward. So today, we're just gonna be talking about the significant other type of love, the love that you would have for your boyfriend or girlfriend or for your husband and wife. So. That's what I'm gonna be、uh, talking about today.、Um, 
that is my opinion about what love is in general. Uh, I also feel the need to clarify what type I'm looking for. I don't usually want to talk about what type I'm looking for because for me, it's kind of stupid. And also, I think a lot of people will be surprised and maybe you won't believe me, but this is the truth or rather this is the reality of myself. I have spent quite some time thinking about it and this is the reality. What type am I looking for? I don't look at, at looks. Essentially, I don't look at your face. So when I see someone their faces are instantly blurred to me i think this is probably because ever since i was younger i kind of instilled it upon myself that faces do not matter and um i know some people like to say that that's not actually true and even though you say you want personality you always look at the face first and i used to feel bad because when i tell people that i don't look at their faces you know some of my older friends would tell me that's not true you obviously look at face first I think I'm all enough to just see the reality that I really do not look at face. You could be the most beautiful, handsomest person in the goddamn world and I still would not look at your face. It's like your face is a bomb to me. I can't see shit. I can't feel shit because actually there is a word to describe this. I might be, is it asexual? No, asexual are the people that are not interested in sex or not interested in love in general. I don't think it's that. There is a word for it. Hang on. Let me think about it. I got it. It's demisexual. So people who are demisexual are only um, are sexual orientation where this person only feels sexually attracted to someone only after they've developed a close emotional bond with them. Which means, despite what you look, how you look, it doesn't matter to me because I don't care. Like, it's, it's just how it is. So, I guess that's the very definition of personality. I only look at personality. And I think that's why it's so tough for me to um, to view people or to view... Okay, I'm straight. I just want to put it out there. I'm straight. So, um, which is probably why it's so tough for me to take a look at a guy and be like, Oh, I'm interested in you. And I want to see where this goes. I, I can't do that. I actually need to start off... I would say start off as friends first because that's the only way I will realize if I like this person or not, you know? So, uh, yeah. So I need to start off as friends. I need to see what I'm looking at. I need to understand who you are, what you are, whether or not this is um, good or not good. So that's essentially what I look for as a type. As If you are looking at it from a materialistic point of view of the type that I'm looking for, that is it. But if you want to look about it in an emotional point of view... I just want someone who is um, who is kind. I think uh, that is the... I mean, kind can be a lot of things, right? I just want someone who can be kind just as he can be um, strong. So, and I maybe down the... I, I feel like um, I my best friend has told me this before, but it's not just kind I look for, apparently. I also look for someone who is really confident in himself because... I can't seem to stand people that are not confident in themselves. At first, I didn't really understand what she meant until she told me, like, it seems to me like uh, guys who are not confident in themselves, aka they feel the need to constantly seek of affirmation from me. I'm not really good at that. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. I, I, I was kind of um, surprised when she told me this, but... After further inspection, I realized that what she was saying was the truth. It was the truth because one, I find myself getting very uncomfortable if um, the person I'm talking to is constantly needing affirmation, is constantly needing me to tell him that he's good or he's he's doing so well and, and stuff like that. Because uh, my opinion is, um, I can tell you once or twice if you're really struggling, but if you keep doing it over and over again, I start to feel like I need to back you up. I need to support you because you are so, so um, dependent on me. And I think, not I think, I know that's something that I really dislike because it makes me feel like I can't be myself. I can't be confident in myself because my significant other isn't confident in himself. And the idea that... um, girls or guys can fix each other in a relationship i think that's very true however you if you're in a relationship with someone who has not fixed themselves it's very tough for you to uh, continue because you are already fixed you know and, and now you have to fix someone else and i don't agree with having to fix someone else they should fix themselves before they get in a relationship 
and you should not be stuck in the cycle of trying to fix someone because you deserve someone better than that okay moving on i think this begs the question since i already answered it am i in a relationship obviously not that's why i'm talking like this if i was in a relationship maybe my opinions would change but for now it has been a hot minute since i've dated someone like seriously dated someone uh, I haven't talked to anyone, I don't think. L- literally, my um, my DMs, if you want to say in the Gen Z term, my messages are dry as fuck, okay? And I, I don't receive any notifications. The only notifications that I receive is from Shopee. That is who is looking for me. No one else is looking for me except for Shopee. <laughs> and um it's not sad some people might say oh my god you're so dry it's so sad are you not like irritated or are you not like bored of course i'm bored but you know i've kind of um because i've been single for quite some time i kind of just got to the jive of it where i really really appreciate my own self first and um I feel like I could do so many more things uh, by myself as compared to when I was in a relationship and um yeah that that's the reality of it i suppose so so if if you guys are asking if i am in a relationship the answer is no and i don't think i'll be in a relationship anytime soon because i i'm just not interested in anyone right now maybe it might change in the future maybe it won't but i guess you'll see um but i guess this begs the question like why am i not in a relationship i I feel like a lot of people will ask that. I'm not in a relationship not because I don't want to, but because there is literally no one and I don't I'm not really interested in said no one, you know? I can't be dating air and maybe the reason why I'm not in a relationship is because I have really, really strong standards and my morals and values can be through the roof sometimes. Because of that I X out a lot of potential people and I don't think that's anything bad, it's just me being honest with myself. Just because someone is interested in me doesn't mean that I'll be interested in them. I don't date for flings, I don't date for the fuck of it. Like, I date looking for something serious and I think a lot of people are scared of that because I, I'm the person that that would that would throw down the that would throw down the words and say I want to commit and I want a commitment and I'm looking for something serious. and. Um, a lot of people get scared about that. I, I personal experience. A lot of people get scared about that. They immediately don't like. They like the idea of it, but once they're in it, they feel like they're trapped. And um, I don't see or hear a lot of guys that are willing to be committed and willing to stay long term. And because of that, uh, in order to make it easier for these guys, I just kind of let them go. So after I tell them and they don't really agree, I just let them go because there's no point in me being committed to you if um, you're, we're going to be um, hirihara essentially, which which means flying here and there. And yeah, so yeah. Um, I guess you could say my morals and values is I really value commitment. I value loyalty, of course. I value um, the idea, not the idea. It's just everything that you would think of in a perfect relationship. I would want that, you know. And I also feel like um, my heart line is cheating. So if you cheat on me once, it's over. I'm not going to give you a second chance. I'm not going to even hear you explain it. And this can be a bit of a taboo topic because i know some couples and i know some marriage couples who still stay together even after cheating and sometimes it works out sometimes it's good for them their relationship is so much better after but personal experience i grew up in a household where uh, this cheating thing was a really big deal so um i guess you could say i'm a product of a child who experienced a lot of things when they were growing up i had a i had kind of a messy childhood so not perfect my family is still here obviously but growing up it was quite tough and because of that i put a hard line towards uh, cheating in general because i don't believe anyone would change after they cheat because If they were going to cheat in the first place, they will keep on cheating regardless of how many promises you make. And I'm not going to, if I ever have kids, I'm not going to subject them to that type of emotion and to that type of feeling that I went through. I know my sister would disagree though. My sister tell me like if um, the person cheats on her once, she'll give him a second chance. I am not like that. 
And my dad would say differently to my dad would say if kids are involved, it's a different story. No, I've thought about it for quite some time. I still won't do it. I would not want to subjugate my children to that type of thing. And this is just a really, really hard line. And that's something that I will put down immediately if I am talking to a guy. And yeah, it seems it seems like, of course, cheating is like, uh, it's supposed to be the number one thing that you're not supposed to do in a relationship but you'll be surprised with the generation now people cheat left and right for them it's totally normal it's totally normal for them to have affairs it's totally normal for them to flirt with others it's not normal since when did we live in a world where cheating was normal it's not normal is it so difficult for you to just close your eyes and to just not look at other people not talk to other people i also feel like i need to clarify here what i mean by cheating because uh, maybe some people are confused about it. It's your intention. Is your intention to talk to this person is to cheat? If your intention is to cheat, that's cheating. If your intention is to just talk to this person, that's not cheating, okay? And maybe I also believe that flirting is totally normal. It's something that we cannot control. As human beings, we cannot control flirting. It's, it's like an automatic thing. You know, unless you're an asexual, then maybe, just maybe, you won't be able to do that. But I don't think you can control flirting. It just comes out. But it's your intention of flirting. Are you flirting with this girl or guy because you want to cheat? Because you want to talk? Because you're emotionally cheating? Or are you flirting with this guy and girl and you don't even realize you're doing it? You don't even think about it? It's just the intention. And um, being able to realize that is kind of like, you know, it'll make things better but all in all just try not to flirt with someone that you obviously not in a relationship with because flirting with someone else even though it's not physically cheating it's still emotionally cheating okay but you know what some guys like the idea of being able to talk to someone because they're so sick of their relationship look if you're so sick of your relationship why don't you just break up why do you have to still hang on to their relationship i feel like guys and girls it's not just guys they have this thing where if you are so miserable in the relationship then break up why even bother continuing why even bother wasting your time why still hang on to it you're just gonna make things hurt you know oh fuck i don't understand that it's stupid to me if you don't like it don't like it if you like it stay fuck it if, if you're gonna fuck around in the process do not blame the other person for leaving you in the end it's fucking ridiculous jesus christ okay i got a bit too heated there but that's literally what i mean about that that is what my what i feel about that i just i'm just so sick of people complaining that they hate their relationships yet they still stay or better yet i hate when they're obviously taken and i see a girl or a guy flirt with them and this person flirts back because they can't control it and it fucking it fucking like makes me feel like you already know what the fuck are you doing do you like the challenge do you like the idea that you're the other person fuck you man oh my god you need to get therapy you need to talk to someone you you need to step away from all things love and relationship if you are like that but anyway that is just one of it i've known a lot of girls for some reason i know a lot of girls that do this you know they talk to a lot of guys they, they're texting 10 different guys and like i don't know is it fun to, to text like 10 different guys to have so many girls and guys on your back and call and then you fuck around with them you text them you flirt with them what is the what what is the intention here what is the point here like is it because you thrive on that attention because i i like i said i know some people that act like this and it's kind of it's kind of disgusting really it, it, it just proves proves to me that you're obviously not confident in yourself and you obviously seek validation from something else, else aka other people other guys other girls just stop okay it's you can you just use that time doing something else doing something productive huh yeah do that use that time doing to do something productive and to do something with your life other than that why am i so heated about it why am i so um disagreeable about this well of course it's because i fear it as well you know what if i get into a relationship and this guy ends up doing all of that what if i get in a relationship and he ends up cheating on me oh i it's just the idea of it right it fears me because it makes me think like i can't trust anyone which is probably contributing that that probably contributes to the fact that is the reason why i'm still single now it's not it's not denial you know like i truly believe that shitty things will always happen regardless of whether you're in a relationship or whether you're not in a relationship shitty things will always happen regardless of what you do and what you choose and sometimes they just happen and you can't control it 
the only thing you can control is what you do after. I am the type of person that would not put myself in that situation because of that. Not putting myself in that situation means not dating. That are amazing. It also means that I am single. I'm still single. And that's okay. I'll get to the that's okay a little bit later. It's not just the fear and denial of it, you know. It's the disappointment of it. like, And the reality of it. The reality is when people cheat or when people hurt you, you can't stop it. You know, I've only lived on this earth for a short amount of time. And I already know reality is a bitch. It's disappointing. Sometimes it makes you feel like, oh my god, like I can't be bothered. Why when it's so disappointing? I've been disappointed so many times. And I, you know, some people tell me, don't close the door. You know, you you close your door, which is why, because you close the, your door, no one is interested. I, I don't fucking get that, you know. I It's not like I close my door. I just not interested in the things that you provide for me you know and it's not even the things that you provide for me because i am so disappointed in our generation now that i can't even be bothered boys act like boys girls act like girls no one wants to be in a relationship everyone just wants to fuck around and that becomes the reality and not only does this become a reality now we have younger people who don't really want to be in a relationship anyway because they want to focus on their career they want to focus on other things other than a relationship and then we have we have people who are so desperate to be in a relationship they would do anything possible to achieve that they do hookups all the time because for them hookups mean no strings attached but the reality is it is impossible for you not to be emotionally attached once you start hooking up if you can emotionally detach yourself that's okay but if you're gonna hook up with someone And you know that you're going to be emotionally attached. Do not do it. The idea of hooking up for me is stupid. It is insensible. It is ridiculous. It is stupid. Look, you can do whatever you want. You want to hook up because you can. You can fuck whoever you want. I don't really give a shit about that. It's just the idea of it is so stupid. Because a lot of people get hurt in the process. And not only do a lot of people get hurt in the process. If they're not careful, they end up pregnant. And there is there's just so many so many things that can go wrong here i i just wish we could go back in time and um and remember the days when the idea of hooking up was frowned upon because i know so many people who don't give a shit and who end up getting hurt in the process and i just i just think it's stupid we should we as human beings should stop hookup culture not because i'm not allowing people to have fun but because there are so many things that can go wrong with this and so many things that it can just go wrong with it there's nothing else to say personally i condone hookup culture i can talk about it when people tell me that they're doing it i can say i don't agree but it's not like i'm gonna stop you because at the end of the day it's your choice and your decisions which brings me to my next point because of this, I really, really value my personal space. I think um, every time, let's say if a guy is interested in me, 99% of the time, it's always want to hook up. I can't stand that. It's fu- oh, it's so fucking annoying. It, it makes me, f- it feels like my soul is dying every time I hear someone tell me that they want to hook up. Because it's like, is, is that what you think of me? Like, you only look at me as this piece of meat. You don't look at me like like a normal person like a normal friend and what in your right mind thinks i will hook up with you what the fuck some guys and girls right they have this such a big ass ego they truly believe they can walk up to someone and tell them hey want to hook up i'm interested fuck off actually fuck off if you come at me with that type of shit right i will smack you to the high heavens i have no time for this which is probably why i'm really really protective of my personal space to be honest and also one of the reasons why i'm still single you know some people right they do hookups in order to f- to see if they're uh, compatible. That's the word, compatible. You know what? I have mixed feelings about that. You can still do whatever you want, but I will stick with my own morals, which is you better put a goddamn ring on my finger before we talk about anything else. That is my opinion, and that is what I, my choice. That is my choice. And no matter what you do, no matter what you say, if you say I'm tempted, if you say that, you're human you will be uh, you will be interested at some point i don't give a fuck okay you don't have the right or nerve to tell me differently okay i'm interested when i'm interested i am not interested when i'm not interested consent is key ladies and gentlemen if you don't know what consent is take a long hike and walk off a cliff okay
you know, as you can probably tell from how um, out, out loud I am, how outgoing I am, this is quite a... Uh, not I won't call it like a, an interesting or heated topic to talk about. This is this is just what goes through my mind because I'm just so so frustrated with like the opposite gender. Not all men, I understand. Not all men, but so far all I see is the same people. Also, I mean, in my vicinity, it's literally just the these these things, these guys. And you might think, because of my opinions, because of how straightforward I am, because of what I'm thinking, that's why no one is interested. I actually think that is true. No one seems to be interested, or at least I haven't received any um, confessions or anyone who is willing to be interested in quite some time, actually. It's usually me who is interested. And, you know, my sister and my best friend told me that it's not that no one is interested. It's just I've put myself so high up the pedestal, right, that... um a lot of guys they can't reach it and because of that they would rather stray away and i know some of y'all are going to be like it's because your standards are so high it's because you're acting like a bitch that's why no one wants to date you fuck you i have standards for a reason okay and i am not going to lower my standards for someone who has the nerve to talk like this do you really think talking like that to me is gonna make me even more interested in you fuck off with that shit honestly i got no time for you so what if guys get uh, insulted it, you know you you don't even have to uh, be a girl or a guy to agree with me and i'm sure if you are a guy you would agree you would want a girl who is in all regards independent i hope you would want a girl who's independent who knows what she's doing who knows what's right and wrong you know is i'm sure you would want a girl like that and for girls i'm sure you want a guy like that too fuck like if you're it's like okay it's like this if i'm coming into a relationship i'm bringing in my loyalty i'm bringing in my love i'm bringing in everything that i'm willing to bring do not lower yourself down to someone who is not willing to bring the same things to the table, okay? Instead, get away from this person at all. If you're bringing this to the table and they're not bringing it to the table, don't. Just stop. Go away. But if you are, a, but if you are in a relationship and you realize that things are going bad, maybe stop to think, what is it that you're bringing to the table? And is this person bringing it to the table as well? Maybe by having a conversation, you too might be better, you know? And this doesn't, this doesn't have to um, just talk about straight couples this can be like gay couples or bi couples for me in my opinion like you can take however this opinion and this um advice as you would do just do whatever you want with it i'm just talking about it but hey on the topic of independence though do okay this is something that i'm actually curious about do guys want a girl who's independent do do they want a girl who knows what they're talking about who knows what they're doing who kind of um does what she does because in my opinion i know a lot of guys they like girls who are independent. They like the idea that girls are de- are independent. But once they get into the relationship and they notice that the girl is independent, they get very um, disappointed because being independent means we don't really need help. And because we don't need help, we don't always talk to you. We don't always ask for help. We don't always ask for your opinion because, hey, we're independent. Some guys don't like that because they want to be helpful they want to be seen as being able to help you and like i said they like the idea of it they don't like it when it is in front of them this is just personal experience because i know some guys i used to talk to they like the idea of it but then when they start to see that i'm doing things my own way i'm doing things without their opinion they get a bit icky so i don't know make do make do with that with what you will i'm just uh, putting it out there you know and sometimes being too strong can also come across as like too scary for some people i'm not really i would honestly i don't i like i said i don't really give a fuck uh, my personality my opinions my concept how i do I, I don't even consider myself strong i just consider myself straightforward and independent if you would say whatever you want to say it's like for example there's a bag of groceries in the car i'm gonna take it and i'm gonna put it inside the house why would i wait for you when i could just do it myself you know i know it's kind of stupid it's kind of a stupid example but that's just my opinion i know a lot of people be like you can ask for help you can do this you can do that i i I can't be bothered if you want to help help but right now the fastest way to get these groceries in the house is if i bring them myself 
okay i'm i'm taking the whole level this whole level of girls can do anything to another level you know once i had an argument with my dad because i told him um i told him to uh no wait he was telling me to wash his clothes and i told him like you can just click a few buttons and then you can wash your clothes yourself because sometimes we don't have time to wash your clothes and then he was saying like changing the light bulb is hot is is as hard as washing the clothes and i got really irritated and literally the following weekend i decided to change the light bulb just to spite him because i can change the light bulb too okay so if i can change the light bulb he can wash his own damn clothes I love him, okay? I love my dad. I'm just saying that there are just certain things here that irritates me. And I don't know, being in an Asian household is is different. Maybe when you're in a Western household, it's different. But being in an Asian household is different. Familial ties is very important. In this case, my dad might annoy me, but I love him to bits. He is the reason why I'm still alive today. And he is the reason why I am who I am today. And I'm not going to... I'm not going to insult him. He's a good dad. He's a great dad, actually. So, I guess... This brings me to the final part of the topic, love. I, oh my god, I, I did not mean for this episode to be me constantly going on a rant or how I disagree and agree with love in general. It's, look, don't, don't, don't make my comments about love make you feel like um, it's impossible. It is possible. I just, I, this is just me ranting about how disappointed I am of certain things and it has nothing to do with anyone else. Your opinion about love is different from mine and that's okay. I guess my opinion is like this because like I said, I've been single for quite some time. I've been um, enjoying the single life for quite some time. So everything I do, every decision I make is only for myself. And right now, the only love available for, you know, for me is my family and myself and my career and my friends my two friends fyi um yeah that's just the reality of it and sometimes not gonna lie it gets lonely not not gonna lie it is lonely lonely under just understand that i might sound like i had my shit together but i'm only human and i don't think i have my shit together sometimes i don't have my shit together and part of my weakness is realizing that i am still alone i'm by myself i don't have anyone to talk to any significant other to talk to let me rephrase that and it gets a bit lonely sometimes especially when you see people who have great relationships who are doing so well and then there's you who seem to have your shit together and yet still can't find anyone that is sad (sighs) but you know it is the reality of it i don't quite i don't care you know and i've kind of uh, i made my bed so now i gotta lie on it if there ever if there ever is going to be a person my significant other in the future if there really is going to be that person i will let you know and if i don't that's okay too i've kind of just resolved into the fact that i will probably grow old and uh take care of my parents and live with five dogs until the day i die and you know what that doesn't sound too bad you can just because the fact is you can do whatever you want when you're single you can literally do whatever you want not to say that you know my brothers have pretty good relationships and it seems like they're really really happy but maybe maybe guys are a bit different from girls it's the day you know my father joked with me he said the day i bring home a guy that means it's really serious i don't blame him i I think i i know what he's saying is true so who am i to tell him any differently but that is what i think about love now that 14 february is approaching very very soon i know all of you who are single and um sad as fuck because i know some of you seek validation from love from someone else giving you love and that's okay you know it's okay to seek validation from someone else because we're humans and we're sociable creatures we're not meant to be alone in this world we're not meant to walk the path alone i just want to let you know that hang in there you know you are going to find someone you are going to find someone who will love you for who you are who will stay with you for who they are and i'm sure this person is dreaming and thinking about you as well there shouldn't be anything to worry about really if my okay it's it's kind of like um you know my brother he's a doctor 
right so a couple of years ago he had like he has he he's experienced like two relationships where it didn't really work out in the end and my dad told him that um you're a doctor are you serious do you really think you won't be able to find a relationship you literally people will be throwing their daughters at you because you're a doctor and i think that's funny because it is true if you truly believe that you can't find a, a significant other just because you are who you are that's kind of stupid everyone has a significant other what makes you think you can't have one and you know what maybe you feel like you feel kind of bad because you can't, you don't have one not because no one is interested but because your standards are just too high and baby that is nothing to be uh, angry about there's nothing to be sad about keep your standards high because there is no other way a guy or a girl is gonna climb that if it's not hard make it hard you know you deserve the world you deserve better all right so for the 14th february valentine's day I hope, regardless of the day, you do enjoy yourself. No depression now, okay? Do not stay cooped, cooped up in your room. You don't deserve any of that. Do something. Buy something nice. Go for a facial. Do your hair. Do whatever the fuck you want. Because the truth is, you can do whatever the fuck you want. Okay? So, that's all for me today. I hope you guys really, really enjoyed this podcast. I feel like I exposed so much about myself today. But either way, it is part of being involved. If you guys have any questions for me, if you guys really enjoy this podcast, do let me know. I would really like to talk to you guys one day and I would really like to know what you guys thought about this. Hope you guys um, have a great day ahead and I'll see you guys very soon. Bye!